Ooh. Hello. Right, following on from the roaring success of the last slide rule video, I thought I'd do another one to explain how to keep track of the decimal point during compound multiplication and division exercises. And also I wanted to show you my rather nice anniversary present that my wife got for me. This is a custom-made combined notebook, pencil and slide rule holder. All made from a recycled bike tyre apparently. Wrapped around, fixed with Velcro. And it's got space for my little Faber-Castell and a pencil. How awesome is that? Okay, so I showed you in the last video that when you are doing a long series of multiplication you need to keep track of the decimal point and by way of a reminder we looked at the fact that if the slide extends out to the right when you're doing a multiplication you need to take one digit from the number of digits in your answer. What we're going to look at tonight is the fact that if you do a division by the direct line-up method, which I'll go into in a second, and the slide sticks out to the right, you add one to the digit in your final answer. So what I mean by the direct line-up method is there's several ways of doing division on a slide rule, but the one we're going to do tonight is the direct line-up. So let's say, for example, we're dividing five by two, we line up five on the bottom, which I've got under the cursor to make it easier to get the two in place, and we directly line them up. So that as I'm looking at it there, we're dividing five by two. And to find the answer, you run your finger along the scale that you've got that on, find the one, and then look down to find the answer on the scale underneath. So it's like a little rectangle shape. 5 divided by 2, run along the top, find the 1 and read underneath it is 2.5. Now the advantage of this method is that it then allows you to carry on and do a multiplication with that answer you found. So at the moment I've got the 1 set against the 2.5 so anything I line this cursor with, with along the top allows me to multiply by 2.5. So for example 3 times 2.5 gives me 7.5 and it's already set for that so without moving the slide I can do x divided by y times by z. See 5 divided by 2 find the answer there times by 3 is 7.5 and we can use this to very quickly rattle through a series of calculations like this. Right, before we do that, let's work out how many digits we're expecting in our answer. And we do that by counting the number of digits in the top line. That's a three-digit number. Remember, we're looking at the number of digits before the decimal point. That hasn't got any, so that's zero. This is a negative number because there are two zeros after the decimal point before you get to the meat. That's a minus two, that's a plus one, and that's a plus two. Bottom line, zero, a minus one, that's going to be a one and a two. So on the top line here, we've got four, on the bottom line here, we've got 2. So 4 on the top line, 2 on the bottom. Now if we're dividing, we take that from that. So we're expecting an answer with two digits in. And by working in those groups of 3, x divided by y times by z, we don't need to worry about the final position of the slide because we're going to carry on. We only need to make corrections if we find ourselves stopped or if we come to the end and we do either a division or a multiplication and that slide stuck out to the right. If it's a division, we add 1 to the number of digits in our final answer. If we end up stuck and it's sticking out to the right on a multiplication, 
we minus 1 from that final figure. So let's see how we go and I'll show you how that works. So let's do this first group of 3. First number we're doing is 305. There's 305. And we're dividing that by 0.17 by direct lineup. So let's do that. And then we're going to times it by 0.45 on this top line. Now, if we were stopping there, we would read off our answer on that bottom line, but we're not. We're going to carry on. And in order so that we don't get confused, we'll keep track of which part of the calculation we've done. OK, so we've got our answer on the bottom line. We're going to carry on. We're going to divide that, again, by direct line up by 0.71, and then times by 0.0007. That then is going to get divided by the square, square root of 8.2. Now remember the, the B scale shows us the square of what's on the C, so we can use that to find the square root. And we're timesing that by 6.1. We then want to divide that by 12. And times by 52. Now, uh-oh, we've run out of room. So we're going to stop there and read off our answer under the 1, which is 4 something. Now at this point, we're doing a division and the slide's stuck out to the right. So we add 1 to the number of digits in our expected answer. And in order to carry on this calculation we need to end switch, so swap that one for this one. You with me? There's our answer on the bottom. We want to carry on multiplying it. We're going to have to put the one there so that we can then look back to times it by 52. OK, and then we read off our answer, 2, 1, it's in the middle there somewhere, it's 217, 218, something like that. You can check that with a calculator if you like, it's 217 point something or other, and it's a three digit number. I hope I've made that clear, if not, ask and I'll bore you rigid with some more. Okay.